What's up guys? Uh, this is Nick from Arch City Poker and in today's video I'm going to be doing something really different. Um, this could be the first and last of uh, what is going to be my college football uh, podcast that I'm going to put on the site. Um, I think that I, I love college football and I, I like talking about it with a couple of my close buddies. Uh, I think we all consider each of us pretty logical and smart for I think for this first, uh, this week's episode, I'm going to talk about the college football playoff landscape, and then I'm going to get into the betting segment uh, for you DGENs out there. Um, I'm not a betting expert by any means, so don't hold your breath for those, but I think that'll be a fun little uh, part of this. So let's talk about uh, the college football playoff landscape. So as you guys can see by my scarlet hoodie, uh, I am an Ohio State fan for you People that aren't Ohio State fans, I'm sure you'll hate me in this moment, but uh, I'm not your typical super biased fan. I, I, I'm pretty realistic when it comes to my team, and I think they're a very good team this year. Uh, I think they're playoff worthy, as I'll discuss, but uh, let's get into the teams that I think absolutely control their destinies. Alabama's in, so done there. <laughs> There's nothing to really talk about. Clemson um, is in, in my opinion, if they win out. They will have wins at Auburn uh, against Louisville at Florida State, and then the ACC championship uh, game where they'll probably play like Virginia Tech or whoever, but they'll if they win out, they'll win the ACC title, they'll have a major conference title, they'll have three very good wins. Uh, I think the committee likes them. They have Deshaun Watson back, uh, most players back from a team that, that went to the title game last year. So uh, Clemson's very solid. I think they're in uh, for sure if they uh, win out. And, and for you people that are hating on Clemson, saying like, well, they've had a lot of close games this year. They haven't you know, they haven't been dominant or anything. Well, a measure of, of a championship football team, in my opinion, is a team that can win close games. So I actually think um, that that's possibly a good thing for them. You could argue game control-wise that's not as good, but uh, I think Clemson's definitely in if they win out. I don't think there's de any debate there. Michigan, I believe, is a team that if they win out are in, as much as it pains me to say. Uh, they'll have wins against Wisconsin, Penn State, uh, both at home, at Ohio State, and then the Big Ten title game against uh, what would be Wisconsin, I believe, if they are able to get there. So um, I, I think that's that's a lot of good wins. I think Michigan's perceived to be very strong, and they play in what is perceived to be a very strong conference this year. So I, I like Michigan um, in that sense if they can win out, which I hope they don't. And uh, <laughs> so we'll get into who's next that I want to do here. This is where we start getting into uh, some interesting ones. Washington – I believe controls their destiny if they went out. My problem with Washington is they've played literally nobody. Um, and I think, in my opinion, and and for you guys that see me do my poker vlogs and my videos and stuff, I try to keep it pretty clean and um, I try to be understanding that there could be people that are younger that are possibly watching this. But if you're watching this college football podcast, I'm going to kind of unleash a little bit in this one and um, kind of keep it kind of real. But I mean, to be totally honest, I think the Pac-12 is is kind of dog shit this year. Um, I think that a major conference championship is is something that that should be held uh, of high standard for the college football playoff committee, but maybe not as much so if, if that conference is not as good. I mean, Washington this year they have wins against Rutgers, Idaho, Portland State, Arizona, Oregon, and Stanford, which like in the last five to seven, ten years, whatever, or that those would be good wins, but I don't think those are really great wins this year. Oregon sucks. Uh, Stanford is 7-3, and three, but they literally can't move the football. They, they, the only game they've moved the football in this year was against Oregon, who might have the worst defense in, in all of Division One football. So Washington, I, I'm not trying to take anything away from that team. I think they're a good team. Uh, I like how they play. I've watched them two or three times this year. They, they play hard. They have a good coach in Chris Peterson. Uh, the quarterback, Browning, is very good, but they have a, their one good win is against Utah. And Utah's a solid team. That's a good win or whatever. But, you know, if Washington wins out, they'll have wins against Washington State, uh, Utah, potentially able to avenge their loss to USC. And, and USC in that game at Washington, USC controlled that game from start to finish. Uh, USC is, I, I think, in my opinion, 100% the better football team, the most talented team in that conference. Um, it's unfortunate for them that they didn't, they couldn't find Sam Darnold in, until a few weeks into the year or whatnot. Um, I, I think that that game against Alabama, if they were able to play them, would be a little bit different than the shellacking they got, uh, I think it was week one. So 
Um, USC is is a very good football team. But yeah, getting back to Washington, I do think they control their destiny um, if they get that Pac-12 championship. But I'm not really a believer in them. I don't think they are better than uh, Ohio State. I, I don't know if, if they're better than Louisville. Uh I, I don't know if they're better than, than Michigan or possibly Wisconsin, to be honest. So, And I'm not a Big Ten homer. I, I don't root for the Big Ten. I, I don't give a shit how the Big Ten does besides Ohio State. I mean, if it helps Ohio State's cause as far as them getting into the playoff, which I think this year is it's proving that that could be the case, um, as highly regarded as that conference is being held, I, um, I, I think that that's fine. But, yeah, I'm not like a Big Ten homer. So I, I'm, I just think that Washington – is an interesting one to me. I, I think they haven't really played anybody, and and when they did play a team that I consider very good, they, they kind of got dominated. So that's an interesting one. Uh, the teams that don't necessarily control their destinies, I, OSU is a really difficult one for me because it seems like the committee really likes them. I, I, it, it seems like... Uh, like almost blasphemy if OSU got left out at 12-1, and one, but the College Football Playoff Committee does... Um, th they do hold conference titles is something like that's conference titles are are very highly uh looked upon and so i think that would suck if we didn't get that chance to play for it but uh oshi would have wins against oklahoma like at oklahoma at wisconsin thump nebraska at home which was uh going to be a, probably a top 25 team to end of the year to end the year and then uh a top three win against michigan uh to end the year most likely so and by most likely i mean michigan's ranking i'm not gonna say most likely beating them but um, so OSU would have a really good resume, a resume that really smashes Washington's, in my opinion, smashes Louisville's. Um, I, I think comparing OSU and Louisville is, is not even a debate. Louisville has a, a good win against Florida State. They lost to Clemson, even though I, like most people, think they outplayed Clemson in that game. A loss is still a loss. Um, they've played and beat teams like Charlotte, Syracuse, Virginia, Boston College, Wake. Louisville's played nobody. Um... So I, I think I'm going to get to Louisville in a second. I, I'm not trying to destroy them right away. But, well, I guess I kind of am in a sense. But I, I think OSU's resume is one that would rival anybody's in college football at the end of the year if they end up winning out, um, even, you know, like Alabama, although Alabama will be an undefeated uh, SEC champion uh, most likely. So that's I'm not going to try to compare them. I think Alabama is the best team in the country right now. But um, it, it is going to be interesting to talk about. I think this is going to be the first year where – we are going to possibly have to debate a conference champion, maybe a two-loss conference champion in, in a couple of these versus some uh, one-loss non-conference champs that we think might be better than them. So Louisville, uh, just to kind of wrap up, I guess I, I started to talk about Louisville. Lamar Jackson is, is uh, potentially the most dynamic player in the country, if not the most dynamic player. I think if you look back at like Texas in 2005 with Vince Young, I mean, they had – there's a lot of good players in that team, but Vince Young basically won that national championship. So uh, if you look at Michael Vick at Virginia Tech back in, what was it, 99 now? Man, that <laughs> makes me feel old. But uh, I, I think if you have a really dynamic, amazing player at quarterback in college football, you can uh, win games with him alone pretty much. So I think Louisville, it, when they're playing their best, can play with anybody in the country. But uh, they've shown a little bit of vulnerability against some weaker teams. Um, I, I think that their resume, it's just going to be tough for them without uh, most likely being able to get to the ACC title game. So Louisville, I think, really needs some help. I think they need some chaos. Oklahoma um, is the last one, or not the last one. I guess I'll talk about Penn State, too. Oklahoma will have losses to Houston and OSU. Uh, if they win out, they'll have wins against like West Virginia, like at West Virginia, which will be considered a good win, I think. Um, Oklahoma State... I mean, the Big 12 is kind of like the Pac-12 to me, like shitty. Um, Oklahoma's definitely playing really good football right now, in my opinion. But their resume, that's going to be one that's going to be interesting to match up against some one-loss teams. Like, does a two-loss Big 12 Oklahoma, you know, two-loss Big 12 champion Oklahoma, are they really getting in over, like, one-loss Ohio State that thumped them at Oklahoma? That's just one comparison. I just thought of that because I, I know we played them, obviously, but... Um, that's one that we kind of have to think about and throw into the mix. They're they're definitely in the conversation now again. Penn State is maybe the most interesting one to me. Penn State, I think, in everybody's eyes that watches college football, is not one of the top four teams, even if they went out. Now, give them credit, they beat Ohio State, even if it was with two uh, block kicks and getting outgained by whatever it was, like uh, almost close to 200 yards in that game. But 
you have to give them credit for that win. I think they did control the line of scrimmage for most of that game, which I think is um, when you look at football games, whoever controls the line of scrimmage usually is winning that game, and, and Penn State won the game. So you give them credit there. Um, they will have wins against Ohio State and most likely Wisconsin that will win a Big Ten championship. They'll have losses to uh, Pitt and Michigan. So Penn State, um, it's going to be interesting because the Big Ten is perceived to possibly be the best conference in college football this year. But, um, you know, I, I saw something on Twitter, I think, where Penn State would be over three touchdown underdogs uh, to Alabama which I don't think it should be that surprising to people. I think they would be underdogs at this point to a team like USC uh, and to many other teams that are kind of in the mix for this playoff. So Penn State's an interesting one. We'll see what happens. But, yeah, so I think that's uh, as far as that goes for the college football playoff landscape. I think there's gonna be uh, it's going to be an interesting last few weeks and uh, a lot to argue and talk about as I switch to my notes. So here we go with uh, the bets sure to go wrong. That's what I'm going to call this segment. Uh, I want to make it very clear I'm not a college football betting expert. Uh, each of my units is $5 a piece. So for all you DJs that consider a unit about $100, that's not me. And uh, I don't really wager uh, serious amounts of money on this. I, I feel like as a poker player, I'm already kind of DGen enough. And so I'm trying to stay out of that world as much as I can. But uh, I'll give you guys three bets, I think, for each week, and if I have other guests or buddies on, we'll, I'll give you their bets or whatnot, but uh, for this week, I'll go with three. First bet, I can't believe this is the first bet of this uh, podcast ever, but I actually like uh, Michigan State this week, plus 21.5 versus OSU. 40% of uh, Urban's losses at OSU are to Mark D'Antonio and Michigan State, so I think they have that going for them. They're obviously down this year, but uh, I think they still have good players on that team. It's at home. It's going to be rainy, cold, and windy, like very gusty apparently. If you go back to uh, last year uh, against Michigan State when we had those weather conditions, Ohio State played absolutely horrendous. Uh, this year against Penn State, we had uh, some very moist and cold conditions, which we played uh, poorly in. So apparently Ohio State's kryptonite is possibly uh, that kind of weather. And I think just uh, for all the reasons I said, I, I think – that it's just too many points in a game that's a rivalry game like this. I, I took Sparty earlier in the year against Michigan when I think it was uh, possibly close to like over 90% or 98% of the money was on Michigan at that point, and I'm kind of like an anti-public guy when uh, I make some bets. So I, I do like Sparty to cover this week. Uh, I hope OSU destroys them, and I'm wrong, but we'll see. Second one is uh, NC State plus three uh, at home versus the U, Miami, Florida. I think – uh, I've watched NC State a couple times this year. This one is a little bit more of a hunch than anything, but they are, uh, I think, better than their 5-5 five and five record indicates. I, I on, the, on the flip side, are the same, uh, excuse me, guys, as I burp there, I, I think Miami at 6-4, and four, you could kind of say the same thing about them, but it's at home. It's a 12-30 kickoff. Uh, NC State is 5-2 and two against the spread in their last seven. Miami is 2-4 and four against the spread in their last six. I think there's upset potential written all over this one. Uh, NC State should have beat Clemson this year at Clemson. They took Florida State to the wire. Um, they did get destroyed by Louisville, but Lamar Jackson, can he has a tendency to possibly do that to some teams. Uh, so I think NC State is a pretty solid team, though. I think you get some value there uh, with the points as the home dog. Last game uh, for my bet, sure to go wrong. I actually like... Uh, under 55 in the Notre Dame-Virginia Tech game, I, I think I saw that 82% of the money is on the over. Um, and you would think that with both of these teams being uh, more pass-heavy, Virginia Tech's more up-tempo with Fuente this year. Uh, however, in, in most locations in the Midwest, I think, uh, at least stretching across the Midwest this weekend, it's going to be very rainy and cold and windy, as I said in the uh, Ohio State-Michigan game, or Michigan State game, I should say. I think Notre Dame, Virginia Tech, uh, their big play potential is going to be very limited due to the weather. Um, I think that they it's going to be consistently hard to move the football through the air, which both those teams like to do. Um, so I I think, uh, as I said, it's bet sure to go wrong. I, I wouldn't be shocked to see these teams light it up, but I think the weather is definitely going to handicap them. As I said, I'm an anti-public guy. I, I like that 82% of the money's on the over, so I'll go under 55 in Notre Dame, uh, Virginia Tech. So... That's going to do it for this uh, this week's first or the first ever college football podcast on Arch City Poker. Um, I hope a couple of my buddies will join me in the podcast, or I hope I get 
or I hope I can get some guests on here and we can chat about some college football. And, um, you know, for you guys that are looking for just poker, I apologize if, you know, you don't like this kind of thing, but I have like over a hundred articles and videos of poker on my site that you guys are obviously, uh, able to look at. I think this is just something different for people that enjoy college football and sports and, uh, it's something cool for entertainment value for my site, and I just want to do it. It's my site, so I can pretty much do whatever the hell I want. So, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Uh, take care.